1700s, when English settlers arrived in the area now known as Alstead, New Hampshire, they found that nature had created a small gorge with a brook running through it and bedrock near the surface, an ideal location for the placement of mills. Less than a quarter mile upstream, they found a small lake they referred to as the Great Pond, which offered a steady supply of water. The length of the gorge proved sufficient for as many as five mills and their related buildings. These mills became the economic base for the small but busy industrial center that came to be known as Mill Hollow. Water-powered mills were critical to the survival of early settlers. Sawmills provided the planks with which to build homes and barns for livestock. Lathes were used to make tools as well as tables, chairs, and other furnishings. Grist mills turned grain into flour for food. Mills also provided economic opportunity. This is the story of one of those mills, the lone survivor, today known as Chase's Mill. During the first 30 years of the 19th century, sheep farming expanded in New Hampshire and provided a period of prosperity. At its peak, Alstead had 6,000 sheep and many mills evolved to aid in the processing of raw wool. No machine weaving was done in Mill Hollow, but carding, spinning, and fulling all promoted the production of wool fabric. The 1858 map of Alstead identifies the mill as G.W. Draper's grist mill and carding machine. Later, a sawmill was operated on this site by Frank Messer. Frank Messer made wood products, produced shingles, chair stock, dowels, bucket handles, sap spouts, moldings, as well as cider. Milling waned with the approach of the 20th century, but water power was to enjoy one more burst in Mill Hollow. In 1910, architect Hartley Dennett moved to the hauler from Boston. He tore down what remained of Messer's Mill. From 1916 to 1919, he built the structure that exists today. He utilized timber from earlier structures, as well as machinery from nearby mills that were no longer functioning. The mill served as Dennett's woodworking shop, but it also served the community for threshing grain and cutting wood. Above the woodworking shop, people gathered for discussions around the large stone fireplace. They held plays and dances. Artists taught classes. After Dennett's death in 1936, the mill passed to his stepson, Heman Chase, a philosopher, surveyor, and master craftsman. He continued the tradition of making the space available for community use. He taught shop and woodworking classes. One of Chase's students was Toby Dennett, grandson of Hartley Dennett. When Heman died, he left the mill to Toby. Since Toby Dennett's death in 2004, the millworks have been silent, though its owners worked to keep the mill standing. Through the support of the community, some repairs were made to preserve the mill. Repairs were made to the foundation that dates to 1767. A rubber membrane covered the roof. The Mill Hollow Heritage Association, MHHA, was formed in 2012 as a nonprofit to purchase the mill, rehabilitate the structure, and once again reopen its doors to the community. This time as a living museum, community gathering place, and center for hands-on learning. In October 2016, with the support of generous individuals in the community, MHHA purchased the mill. Preservation experts Ingram Construction, with local craftspeople and volunteers, have been working to rehabilitate the mill. Encroaching trees from the surrounding forest were removed. Additional repairs have been made to the stone foundation and supporting timbers. The bank behind the mill has been stabilized and supporting structures have been repaired or replaced. In May of 2018, the roof and dormers were replaced. Cedar shingles for the exterior were made in much the same way as when the original structure was built. Our goal is to open in 2020 as a living museum and center for hands-on learning through exhibits and classes on woodworking, boat building, and more. Even during construction, Chase's Mill is an important community resource, preserving the history of mills in rural New England. 
and as an educational resource. We host tours, provide talks for schools and historical groups, and produce workshops on things such as old-time woodworking skills. Our vision is to share the rich history of water-powered mills and rural ingenuity in New England, and to demonstrate rural technologies as keys to a sustainable future. Chase's Mill preserves both our heritage and serves as a spark of inspiration for the community. Through the generous gifts of individuals, foundations, businesses, and other organizations, we seek to undertake the next phases of rehabilitation, which include dam and waterworks repair, siding, windows, and the purchase and construction of teaching and exhibit materials. We invite you to join us in this effort to preserve this icon of history and American heritage. Thank you. Thank you.